Welcome back to another video. This one is going to be all about credit scores. So if you have any questions like how to check my credit score, what is a good credit score, which credit bureau should I use, or even is a low credit score bad, you'll find the answers to all of these questions and more within this video. And with all of the tips that you're going to learn throughout this video, you can start improving your credit score literally within the next 30 days. So in this video, I'm going to cover which credit reference agency or credit bureaus you should use, how to check your credit score. I'll also talk about credit score ratings things and how where your score is on the scale affects your ability to get credit. And then make sure you stick around because I'll be sharing 10 tips for you to start improving your credit score within the next 30 days, with one at the end that I don't hear anyone talking about, so you won't want to miss that one. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So in the UK, there are three main credit reference agencies, also known as credit bureaus. They are Experian, Equifax and TransUnion. Now confusingly, they all have different scales and provide different ratings, so it's not as if you can compare them directly to each other. Credit lenders such as credit card providers or banks share information with these credit reference agencies about you and your lending, for example, if you're paying on time and what your credit limits are. And they also go to those credit reference agencies for information about you from other lenders when making a decision on whether to accept your application for credit or not. So the key to deciding which credit reference agency you should be using is to first do your research. If you know, for example, that you're going to be looking for a mortgage, have a look at what's on the market and have a look at the providers that you're likely to go with. For example, if you see that Barclays offer the best mortgage for you that you'd like to go for, you can then take a look at which credit reference agencies Barclays are using and it makes sense to go with them because you know that's where Barclays are going to be looking for your information. A lot of the big banks and big lenders actually share information with all three of the credit reference agencies, so it might not make that much of a difference, but some smaller lenders may only use one or two. So once you've found a lender that you're interested in potentially using, a quick Google search should let you know which credit reference agency that they're using, and that'll be a good indicator of the one that you should maybe consider using. So if you're wondering how to check your credit score or your credit report, it's actually quite easy. So you choose one of the credit reference agencies. For this example, we'll use Experian. So you can do a Google search to find their website. And when you go on Experian or any of the other credit reference agencies, they usually have a free trial. So you'll be able to register and check your credit score and your credit report for free initially. But if you want to be checking it more regularly, which is recommended, you may have to pay a small fee each month to use their service. So once you're registered and you've entered all of your information, you'll be able to see your credit score rating and you'll be able to compare this to the scale that's on screen to see where your score stands on the rankings. Experian give a credit score that's out of a maximum of 999. The higher score you have, the less risky that you are considered by lenders. So that means that you're more likely to get the higher credit limits and better interest rates. If your score is lower down, maybe in the fair range, you still may or may not be approved for credit, but it's more than likely that you'll have a lower credit limit and probably a higher interest rate than those with the excellent or good credit scores. That's because you're viewed as more risky than them. So the lenders want to be compensated for taking on the risk of lending to you. If you're rated poor or very poor, or to towards the bottom end of the scale. You may still be accepted for smaller things like a smaller credit limit or maybe a mobile phone contract or credit like that, but you're likely to be paying a much higher interest than those with a good credit score. And if you're considering any big forms of credit while your rating is that low, for example, mortgages or loans, I'd suggest to not even bother applying at the moment because a lot of lenders will reject your application and the ones that do accept it will be offering massive interest rates, which may make it not financially viable for you. No matter where your credit score is on the scale, you should always be looking to try and improve your credit score. This is especially true if you have any plans for maybe buying a house or getting a loan for your business or even a credit card, either soon or in the near future. The earlier you get working on improving your credit score, the better position you're going to be in when it comes to applying. So the 10 tips I'm going to share with you now, if you start applying straight away and put it into practice, you'll start to see improvements in your credit score within the next 30 days. And by the time it comes to applying for that credit that you need, you're going to be in a great position to get it. So tip number one is to view your credit report regularly. Now I know this may seem pretty obvious or like common sense to a lot of people, but you'll be surprised at the amount of people who do not check their credit score 
or the credit report at all. You should ideally be registered with one of these credit reference agencies or something like ClearScore and be checking your score and your report at least every couple of months. The reason to do this is to see if there's any information that's missing or that needs changing or if there's anything on there that you've maybe missed or that you haven't been budgeting for. It's also vitally important that you check your credit score regularly because sometimes mistakes are made. There could be an admin error with your lender who marks down on your account that you've had a late payment or you've missed a payment and this could have a massive effect on your credit score so you'll need to challenge that if it is a mistake but the only way that you're going to know if it's there is if you're checking regularly. It's also good to gauge where you're at and if the things that you're implementing are having a good or negative effect on your credit score. Now you don't have to go over the top and be checking it every single week because lenders usually update the credit reference agencies once a month on average so once a month or once every couple of months should be good enough for you to keep on track of your credit score and your credit report. Tip number two is to check your personal details. This may seem obvious but we're all human and humans make mistakes. So that could even be spelling your name wrong or maybe entering an old address or a wrong address. Making sure your personal details are correct are important so that all of your past and current credit and yours only are linked to you. You're not linked to someone else by mistake or your credit report isn't missing some of your things by mistake. And while we're on the topic of personal details, it's important to make sure you register for the electoral role because this has a massive effect on your credit report. When you think about it from the point of view of a lender, they want to make sure they lend to someone that has a fixed abode a registered home address because should something go wrong and they need to contact you they'll know exactly where to find you and if you start missing payments or make late payments they'll be able to follow up with you because they have your details if someone isn't registered that could imply to the credit lenders that you're someone that hops around you don't stay in the same address for too long and that could be a red flag to them because it shows them that they may not be able to find you if something goes wrong after they've given you the credit. Tip number three is to avoid missed or late payments. These have a negative effect on your credit score because it shows to lenders that there's a high risk that they may not receive their money on time or at all if you're missing regular payments. Making an application for credit with missed or late payments on your account especially if they're within the last six months could have a massive effect on your application it could mean you get declined or it could mean that you have a reduced credit limit and a higher interest rate to reduce the risk that the lenders are taking on so in order to avoid missed or late payments it's so important that you budget your money properly and talking of budgeting i have a video coming out in the next few days talking about tips on how to budget your money properly and there'll be a free downloadable budget template that you'll be able to get access to and you can use it to start keeping on top of your finances by budgeting your money properly. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss when that video comes out. Tip number four is to challenge any derogatory information on your credit report. If you have anything on your credit report that negatively affects your credit score, this is what's considered as derogatory, as it leaves a negative long lasting effect on your credit score and your credit report. So if there are any inaccuracies on there, or information that you don't believe to be fair. For example, if you had a missed payment but the lender didn't even inform you or give you time to rectify it, or if there's a missed payment on there that you know you didn't miss at all, you should first contact the lender directly and dispute this and ask them to remove the information. This is called a notice of correction. If you have trouble with that and the lender refuses or isn't cooperating, you can try doing it through the credit reference agency that you're registered with. So you could contact Experian Support and ask them to chase this up with the lender. Going through them could add a bit of weight to your request and force the lender into action. If going through the credit reference agency fails as well and you believe that this is a genuine mistake that shouldn't be on there at all, you can take it a level higher and go to the financial ombudsman. They are there to settle any disputes between consumers and businesses that provide a financial service so they should definitely be able to help with any wrongful information that's been placed on your credit file but like i say just make sure that you're only disputing information that you know is wrong if you did actually miss a payment and you started ignoring phone calls and letters from the lender it's not worth trying to dispute this because unfortunately you do deserve the missed or late payment on your credit file tip number five is to make sure you work with financial links by financial links i mean anyone that you're financially linked to on your credit report this could be for example if you have a mortgage with a partner or you're married to someone else and share bank accounts or even if you just live with someone else they and their credit reports could have a negative effect on your credit report especially if theirs is really bad so it's important to talk to them and if they're struggling offer them help or advice on how to manage their situation because their situation could be affecting yours and it's important to remember even if you're separated or divorced it's important to make sure that all financial ties are cut because if they're not, even though you're separated and they go off and get a ton of credit and go on a shopping spree and don't make any payments, 
this is going to have a massive effect on your credit score, whether you're still together or not. Before we go on to tip number six, if you found any information in this video useful, please consider giving it a like because it really helps out the channel and it'll let me know to create more content like this in the future. Tip number six is to avoid multiple credit applications. You should avoid making several applications for credit in a short space of time. Every time you make an application, the credit provider will go to the credit reference agency to search for information about you. When they do that, they leave what is called a hard search on your credit report. If you have multiple hard searches within a short period of time, this implies to lenders that you are what they call credit hungry, that you're desperate for credit, and that could imply that maybe you're not managing your money properly or you're relying on credit to get by and that will increase the risk in their view. So you should do your research before you apply and go for the lender that obviously meets your requirements but is the one that you're most likely to get approved for rather than just applying for a handful and hoping that you get one of them. Tip number seven is to reduce credit utilization. This is the amount of credit you're using divided by the amount of credit that you have available. If you times that by 100, you get a percentage. So the idea is to keep that percentage as low as possible. So if you have an overdraft or a credit card that you've managed to pay off, there shouldn't be a rush to close down that account it's worth keeping it open because by having a low credit utilization this looks good to potential lenders because it shows them that you're not reliant on credit to get by on your everyday living and cover all of your costs and it shows them that should anything go wrong you will have the means or funds available to be able to make the payments and that you're not relying on their credit to pay off your bills so the experts recommend that you should get your credit utilization down to below 30 percent so for example if you have an overdraft of 1000 pounds you should try and keep the balance over to below 300. Tip number eight is to use credit wisely. Just because you have access to credit or just because you will get approved doesn't mean you always should. For example, if you have a business that is a proven concept and is doing well and you know by taking out a loan to invest in say products or inventory for the business and you know that you've got a market to sell them for a certain return and that return is greater than the interest that you'll be paying on the credit, then that is considered a good use of credit and is worth doing. Or another example is say you have several debts that you're paying high interest on, but you have the opportunity to apply for a 0% credit card, which you could then use to pay off all of your other debt. So you're paying 0% interest instead of these high interest rates. That again is another good use of credit. And a bad use of credit is going out and buying things that you know are not gonna provide a return on investment or that you don't really need. So getting a credit card to go out on a shopping spree or getting a loan to buy a fancy car when you've already got a car that works perfectly fine could be a bad use of credit. So just because you have it available doesn't mean you should always take it because you could end up putting yourself in a bad situation where you can't afford to make payments so you start getting missed payments on your credit report and it could also have an effect in the future if you want to start applying for things like mortgages where these poor decisions have affected your credit score and stop you from being able to buy the house tip number nine is to not withdraw cash from a credit card when you make normal payments on your credit card you have what's called the grace period and this is usually the time from the date of the transaction to the date of your statement being produced and during that period if you pay off the balance you end up paying no interest on the amounts that you've spent because you've already cleared it before the statement is produced. However, if you withdraw cash from a credit card, this is called a cash advance. And on a cash advance, you'll typically start paying interest straight away and usually at a higher interest rate. This is because it indicates to the lender that you have poor money management and you're relying on credit cards for everyday expenses and for cash and that you don't have any cash available in your normal current accounts. And as you know by now, higher risk for the lenders mean higher interest rates for you because they wanna be compensated for taking on that risk. Tip number 10, and this is the one that I've not heard anyone else really talking about, is avoid other types of cash advances. So it's not just withdrawing cash from credit cards that's considered a cash advance. There are also other things. So that includes using your credit card to pay a mortgage payment, to pay utility bills, to buy foreign currency, travel money or gift vouchers. Also betting and gambling using a credit card can be classed as a cash advance as well as making cash transfers. For example, transferring money from your credit card to your current account. Now all lenders are different so if you're considering making any of these transactions, it's worth contacting your credit card provider to see how they're going to treat these transactions. But you should do all you can to avoid making cash advances because again, it indicates poor money management and can raise a red flag on their end. And by avoiding them, you're also avoiding the expensive interest fees. So that's it. I hope you found this video useful and I hope that by watching it, you found that credit is really important. It's the key that opens up a lot of doors to you in the future, whether that be loans for a business idea or a mortgage for a house. So it's important that you start now to do what you can to either maintain or improve to a 
good credit score. For more content like this, please do subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I'm quite new to YouTube, so I don't have many videos at the moment, but I have a lot of value packed videos planned and you don't want to miss out on any of them. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.